Hello and welcome to Insight Ophthalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another retina lecture. Today we are studying the best vitelliform macular dystrophy. So what is best disease? The best disease is basically a group of disorder which relates to the problems in the gene which codes for the protein which is the best trophin protein, right? So the gene over here is the best one gene and it is also known as the VMD2 gene. So VMD stands for Whitleyform Macular Dystrophy 2 gene, right? Now this gene is located on chromosome number 11. So that's also a very important point. Now, what is the, uh, the function of the bestrophin protein? The bestrophin protein actually regulates the activity of a channel which is present on the basolateral aspect of the RPE, right? Now, these channels are basically chloride channels and they are actually dependent upon the calcium, right? And therefore, they are called the calcium dependent chloride channels which are present in the basolateral aspect of the RPE membrane right now another important aspect that you should know regarding the inheritance of the best disease is that the best disease is basically inherited as an autosomal dominant pattern what does it mean it means that even if one of the parents have the disease the child will definitely inherit the disease from one parent so that is called an autosomal dominant inheritance so basically it's an inherited retinal disorder and we can say that it is a problem in the retinal pigment epithelium. Why? Because the channel is present in the basolateral aspect of the retinal pigment epithelium and therefore we can say that the best disease is basically a dystrophy in, of the RPE, right? And ultimately this dystrophy is going to lead to a presence of egg yolk appearance in the macula of the patient and th therefore we have that title in the thumbnail. Now what happens is that as we have that abnormal chloride channel conductance through those uh, channels which are present in the basolateral aspect of the RPE, the fluid metabolism of the RPE will be disrupted. Okay, so as you can see, the chloride passes through the RPE and so does the, uh, the water and therefore this fluid transport across the RPE will be affected and therefore the metabolism of the RPE will also get affected and ultimately what happens, although we do not clearly know why that happens is that we shall see that there will be abnormal accumulation of the lipofusin pigment in and around the retinal pigment epithelium. So if this is the RPE cells, they're going to see this buildup of the lipofusion within these RPE cells and sometimes it is going to even extend in the subretinal space. So what is subretinal space? Subretinal space is a potential space between the neurosensory retina and the RPE right so normally they are in close approximation to each other however as this lipofusion gets accumulated be, uh, beneath the neurosense retina and the rpe what you see is this uh, vitelliform dystrophy now uh, are there any other genes which can cause vitelliform disorders or vitelliform dystrophy the answer is yes so here the gene is the rds gene also known as the PRPH2 gene. It is called the PRPH2 gene because it's, it actually codes for the protein periphery, right? Now, as we know that the best one gene was basically involved in the chloride conducting channels which were present in the basolateral aspect of the RPE cells. However, this peripherin protein is basically associated with the adhesion of the outer, uh, the various discs which are present in the outer segments of the rods and the cones, right? And therefore, uh, whenever this RDS gene is affected, this peripherin protein is going to get affected. And the organization of those outer discs which are present in the outer segment of the rods and cones is affected and therefore uh, there's going to be problem in the functioning of the rods and cones and ultimately that is also going to cause whitley form macular dystrophy but here the primary problem is within the aspects of the photoreceptor right so this condition because of the rds gene or the prp h2 gene actually also causes whitley form macular dystrophy however this is not called the best whitley form mas uh, the macular dystrophy it is called something as the adult onset 
vitelliform macular dystrophy so basically for the purpose of this video although we have a lot of vitelliform dystrophies we are going to be restricting our discussion to two vitelliform dystrophy first one is the best disease which is basically seen in childhood from 3 to 15 years of age group and then we have an adult onset witley form macular dystrophy which is seen in the age groups of 40 to 60 years so the first one that is the best disease is basically occurring because of the gene defect in the best one gene or also called as the vmd2 gene on the chromosome number 11 whereas the second one that is the adult onset witley form macular dystrophy is occurring because of the problems in the rds gene or the prph2 gene which is responsible for the protein which is the peripheral right now uh, of course we are not going to discuss all the phenotypes in detail however there are the adult onset fovea macular dystrophy which is nothing but the adult onset whittler form macular dystrophy and then we also have something called autosomal recessive bestinopathy bestinopathy now the best disease and also the adult onset fovea macular dystrophy which we discussed just now they both are inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion however the ARB, which is autosomal recessive bestinopathy, is actually inherited in a recessive pattern. That means that you need both the parents to have the disorder in order for it to manifest in the uh, child. Then we have autosomal dominant vitroretinochoroidopathy. Then we also have microconia, retinal dystrophy, cataract and posterior staphyloma syndrome. Now let us first discuss about the symptoms of the best disease. So the onset as we know is typically from 3 to 15 years of age group. Patients will usually report a mild decrease in the vision and sometimes you know metamorphopsia. This metamorphopsia is basically because there's something which is happening at the level of the macula. However, it is usually seen that the vision loss in vitelli form dystrophy is typically mild, okay? As, and most of the time, the patients are just diagnosed when they go for a screening eye examination and most of them are usually asymptomatic, okay? Unless the child progresses to the later stages of the best vitelli form disease, it is usually seen that the vision is quite good. However, if an older patient presents with these bilateral serous macular detachments, you know, sometimes this vitelli form dystrophy, because what is vitelli form dystrophy? You have this vitelli form material which is getting deposited between the neurosensory retina and the retinal pigment epithelium, right? And we know that the, the separation of the neurosensory retina and RPE is actually your detachment right it's nothing but retinal detachment so normally in best disease you will have this vitelliform material actually occupying this space okay and this looks like an egg yolk however sometimes this vitelliform material in the later stages will get resorbed and you will see an empty kind of cavity between the neurosensory retina and the retinal pigment epithelium now if an old patient was to come to you and with such a presentation Many a times it will be actually misdiagnosed as bilateral serous macular detachment and sometimes these patients will be labeled as having central serous chororetinopathy or as age related macular degeneration. So that is one point that you should remember. Now the um, best disease actually passes through six clinical stages and it is very important for us to understand each of them. So the first stage is the stage of pre form dystrophy. So in the pre form, as the name suggests, the egg yolk has not yet formed. However, what we see is very subtle RPE changes and very minimal changes in the vision, if any. The vision will mostly be normal. However, your electrooculogram is definitely going to be affected. So this is very important point that in best disease even if a patient is a carrier of the best disease then also the electrooculogram is going to get affected now what about the vitelli form stage now as you land into the vitelli form stage you will see that classic egg yolk appearance that yellowish appearance in the macula in this now however 30 percent of the patient will have lesions other than that of the macula and they are called ectopic lesion now in this stage also the vision can be normal or they can have a mild decrease in the vision after the Whitley form uh, dystrophy, we have another stage which is called the pseudo hypopure. So initially you have this egg yolk. Now the egg yolk starts layering. Okay, it starts settling down. So you have an empty space on top and the egg yolk layered uh, below and that is 
called a pseudo hyperpion stage because it it looks like a hyperpion in hyperpion also you have settling down of the inflammatory cells similarly here the vitelli form uh, the vitelli form material or the egg yolk material actually lays down to the bottom giving it an uh, appearance of hyperpion and therefore it is called pseudo hyperpion the vision also might not be affected much in this stage as well then you have a scrambled egg appearance this is as if you are making an omelet or scrambled eggs so you break the uh, egg onto a pan and then you shake it with your spatula so what you get is a breakup of all that of that egg yolk and that is called a scrambled egg appearance so all that material finally is going to get scrambled so this is called breaking up of that material so it is called a scrambled egg appearance in the macula here the vision might start uh, getting affected okay and it will be mildly decreased from that of your stage one two or three then we have the atrophic stages now all the vitelli form material is going to start getting uh, resorbed and what will now set in is the rpe and the retinal atrophy so your retinal pigment epithelium which is present behind uh, the vitelli form material will start to get atrophied similarly your neurosensory retina you have the outer nuclear layers so that will also start getting atrophy now as the atrophy sets in obviously your vision is going to start getting affected so vision will now range from 2030 to 20 200 and as the atrophy sets in we know that whenever there's a potential space created or a potential entry created in the rpe here because of the rpe atrophy you might have some rpe defect through that your choroidal vessels are going to now start growing towards the retina and that will lead to formation of a choroidal neovascular membrane which is a complication of the best disease now usually the best disease is not treated up to stage 5 it is only in stage 6 that you actually intervene with your anti vegf agents and you treat the patient now this complication of choroidal neovascular membrane is seen in about 20% of the patients and here the vision is actually decreased to 2200 or even worse so that is one point that you should remember and now let us see all those uh, stages in the picture form. The first stage is the pre vitelli form stage. So in the pre vitelli form stage, what do you see? You will see just mild RPE alterations, okay? And then you have the vitelli form stage where you can see this nice yellowish color lesion sitting in the macula, okay? So it looks like an egg yolk and therefore it's also called an egg yolk appearance. Now, after the Whitley form stage, you have the pseudo hyperpion stage. In the pseudo hyperpion stage, basically what will happen is that the Whitley form material will now start getting to layered up at the bottom. So it will form as if there's a hyperpion. So that is called a pseudo hyperpion stage. Now, sometimes without forming the hyperpion also, the Whitley form material can get scrambled or broken down. So that is called a scrambled egg appearance or a Whitlow disruptive stage. As you can see in the second picture that you have this yellowish lesion and then you have a ring of lesions around that indicating that this material is actually broken down and this is the Whitlow disruptive stage. Coming to the atrophic stages, in the atrophic stages a varied level of atrophy will set up in the outer, new outer retina and the retinal pigment epithelium. So the first picture you can see this RP pigmentary alteration in the macula and the second picture you can see it is more severe atrophy here actually you don't just have the RP pigment alteration but instead there's total RP loss and therefore you see this hypopigmented uh, patch like lesion and through that you can actually see the choroidal vessels underneath so this is an atrophic uh, atrophic stage of the best disease now as i told you that 30 percent of the patients can actually present with multiple lesions you know outside the macula and these lesions are called the ectopic lesions and such a best disease which has multiple lesions present at different places is called a multifocal best disease so basically in the best disease or the Whitley form lesions, you have the solid appearing egg yolk uh, structure present at the center of the macula and that is going to eventually break down, eventually going to get atroph uh, scrambled and leads to uh, formation of a geographical atrophy patch. Now sometimes it might become very difficult for you to differentiate this geographical atrophy from other causes of macular degeneration and dystrophy. The scrambling or this breakdown of the solid lesion can proceed over years and sometimes even may take decades to completely scramble or to completely atrophy. 
Now the question is how do you go about investigating a patient of Best disease? Basically go ahead and do the ERG and electroocular. You can do a fundus fluorescent angiography, a fundus autofluorescence and an optical coherence tomography. The most common one that we do is an EOG and ERG when uh, the best disease is suspected. Obviously, it is after an OCT because OCT is widely available. It is very important for you to remember that the electroretinogram is going to be completely normal in case of a best disease. And the reason is that in best disease, the retina is normal. It's only the macula that's affected. And therefore, the ERG which measures the generalized response of the retina is going to be normal. What about electrooculogram? The electrooculogram is universally abnormal with a decreased Arden ratio and this Arden ratio is decreased to 1.5 or less. So let us now try to understand what is meant by this Arden ratio. Now basically in the eye we have cornea and the Brux membrane which have different polarity and because of that you have a resting membrane potential between the cornea and the Brux membrane. Now, our electrooculogram basically is a test that measures this existing resting membrane potential between these two structures and thereby it actually calculates the functionality of the retinal pigment epithelium. So in this test, basically, I will not go in the details of this test in this video. However, what happens is that the patient is first dark adapted and in dark, what happens is the resting membrane potential starts to fall and reaches a trough or a minimum and that is called the dark trough for several minutes. Now, when the light is switched on, the patient is again light adapted and now the resting membrane potential starts rising again. As the resting membrane potential starts rising, it reaches a peak and from that level, the retina starts adapting to the light stimulus which is given to the patient and from there, the resting membrane potential starts to drop back again. So the peak that we get in the light adapted state is called the light peak and the trough that we get is called the dark trough. Now if you divide the amplitude of these light peak by dark trough, it gives you what is called the Arden's ratio, right? So what happens here is as you can see you have in the dark a trough like this and then in the light you get a peak like this and now you're supposed to divide the two the ratio that you get is Arden's ratio and in electrooculogram uh, of the best disease basically it is this light rise which is affected which is a function of the retinal pigment epithelium and therefore the Arden's ratio is 1.5 or less so that is very important. Obviously make sure that you do an ERG first and then go ahead and do an EOG don't just jump into an EOG because many a time your ERG might be also affected and in those cases you're not dealing with the typical best disease so that's very important so as i told you the full field erg in best disease should be normal the eog light rise is affected that indicates that you're dealing with a primary rpe dysfunction now eog can act as a very good screening tool specifically in uh, parents because we know that the best disease is an autosomal dominant disease so even if one parent is affected obviously the child is going to manifest the disease. So if you have a child who might not cooperate very well with your EOG, what you can go, uh, what you can do, uh, do is you can go ahead and screen the patients by doing an EOG. If any of the patient has an, uh, any of the parents, sorry, have an abnormal EOG, it definitely means that the child has best disease. This is because we are dealing with a disease which has an autosomal dominant inheritance. Now, the question is, is your electrooculogram a gold standard for diagnosis? The re answer is no, because sometimes some patients might have best disease, but still have a normal electrooculogram. And that happens because of non-penetrance. And in those cases, the mutational analysis becomes the gold standard, right? Now, it's very important for you to know another entity that is the adult vitelliform macular dystrophy in which basically you will have EOG light rise affected. However, it will not be as severely affected as it's affected in case of the best disease. Coming to the fundus autofluorescence. Now, I told you that in the vitelliform macular dystrophy, the material which is getting accumulated in the subretinal space or at the level of the RP is basically the lipofusion. Lipofusion has this property, property that it basically autofluoresces. 
and therefore in fundus autofluorescence we are going to see that hyper autofluorescence because of that uh, lipofusin so initially in the stages of vitelli formed dystrophy you are going to see a nice diffuse hyper autofluorescence in the pseudo hyperpion stage you will see hyper autofluorescence at the bottom of the lesion then in cases of the vitelli disruptive stages you are going to see hyper and hypo autofluorescence based on the density of the vitelli formed material right and these changes can be quite striking and even more pronounced than what you see on your ophthalmoscopy now in this picture you can see here there is hyper autofluorescence at the bottom and around the lesion again here this the hyper autofluorescence is corresponding to the place where there's more yellowish color that is more amount of vitelli formed material similarly here we're dealing with the scrambled leg appearance you can see hyper autofluorescence in a patchy fashion and in between you have the hypo autofluorescence areas also coming to the optical coherence tomography in oct basically you can make out the vitelli form material which will look as a hyper reflective material in the subretinal space okay along with that the photoreceptor outer segment will be actually thickened later there will be scrambling and you are going to see a mixture of the hyper and hypo reflectivity sometimes you can see srf also that might be indicative of an underlying cnvm what about fluorescent angiography now basically if you have an egg sitting in your eye obviously the underly underlying fluorescence is going to get affected so in fluorescent angiography you are going to have hypofluorescence in the typical vitelli form lesions because that lipofuscin just like the rpe and because here it is a concentrated accumulated lipofuscin that's going to actually block your underlying fluorescence you are going to have hypofluorescence in the initial typical vitelli form lesions now as the lesion as the stages of the disease progress and as the atrophy sets in obviously this hypofluorescence is going to change into hyperfluorescence because now the rp will be lost the rp has that blocking mechanism so definitely now the underlying fluorescence will be more obvious so you are going to see hyperfluorescence what about this condition autosomal recessive bestenopathy the autosomal recessive bestenopathy is basically as the name suggests is inherited in an autosomal recessive pattern now unlike the best disease it has a progressive retinal dysfunction on the full field erg so here not just your macula but the entire retina is affected and instead you're going to see dispersed punctate flex however you don't have to bother so much about the disease it might be a differential to various other sort of macular dystrophies and uh, the gene here is same the chromosome is same however it's quite a rare disease you can see this punctate lesions that are seen in case of arb that is also a recessive bestenopathy what about the adult onset vitelli form lesion in the adult onset vitelli form lesion you can see uh, it's actually characterized by these yellowish subfoveal lesions that are basically bilateral okay and the subfoveal lesions are going to be much more smaller than what you see in case of best disease if you compare it to the disc they'll be one third of the disc diameter and often they are going to have a central pigmented spot obviously on the oct they are going to look much similar okay hyper reflectivity in the subretinal space so that's all for today i hope you liked it thank you and have a nice day
So that's all for today. I hope you liked it. Thank you and have a nice day.